everyone, welcome to the Scottish Highlands. We have just checked into this little Airbnb. It's a little hut actually, it's really cute. We're in Fort William and we have two days here to explore all the surroundings of Fort William. We're gonna go check out Loch Ness, we're gonna go to the Jacobite steam train, we're gonna try and get a peek of Ben Nevis, move the clouds away, and we're gonna see the best that the Scottish Highland has to offer. because this spot looks so pretty there's a waterfall to my left and a big lock to my right and we actually aren't sure what this lock is called so we're just going to go and try and find out the sign over here so we are actually i think it's lock locky we're at and there's this uh, kind of channel that runs all through the uh, the land and then it opens up into locks and a little bit further up the road is actually Loch Ness, which is the most famous one I would presume. It's where the Loch Ness monster supposedly lives and that is where we are driving to today. We are at Loch Ness now and we've actually come to Urquhart's Castle. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. We actually weren't planning to go and visit, but I'm going to say it again, our English heritage passes got us half price to historic Scotland. So like Edinburgh Castle, we get a half price discount on our tickets. So we thought, heck, that means it's only £13 for both of us to go, so we thought we'll go check it out. We just watched the film in the information centre and we learned a lot about the history of this place. It changed hands many times over the years uh, and it was the subject of many seizures as well. Um, people coming in to storm the castle and try and take control. Some failed, some were successful and the last thing that happened, they blew it up because... Why did they blow it up? So they blew it up and left, so when the Jacobites came, it was too damaged for them to uh, kind of take over control. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. So it looks from a distance like it's just going to be the shell of the castle, but as you come closer, you can actually walk around and they've we've built stuff for you to be able to explore the castle, like this metal staircase here. There's information around like certain areas. I want to go down to the water though. I'm really curious to see how cold the water is. So I'm going to go and feel it. I get swept away it's by some creature called Nessie. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite icy. <laughs> I could probably go in there for a quick cold water swim, but I wouldn't be in there long. <laughs> We're at the highest point now, but it gives a really good view of the castle down below. And then you can see the lock, but over around the left, there's like a old sailing boat. Oh, they do tours, actually. They do tours on the, on the lock, cruising tours. I guess like day trips, half day trips out of the lock which would be pretty cool. I think if we had a nicer day, it'd be a bit nicer. It's a good way to explore, because it's so big, this lock. So Loch Ness is actually the deepest lock in all of Scotland, and this point here next to the castle, this area, is the deepest part of Loch Ness. Yes, yeah, so you don't want to be going and getting into some incidents over there. It is so deep, it's over 220 metres deep, and it's so deep that you can fit two Edinburgh castles in there. Down. I'm a bit scared. I would be. Why do they make these staircases so hard? <laughs> oh, they're so small, the steps. Pleasure. Right, ah! I wonder if that's a true story or it's like a tourism story. Definitely tourism. I think somebody, like in the very early 20th century, maybe a late 19th century. It started with rumours of a big fish and then I think some people um, came back really scared one time they thought they saw something and then there was this one photograph which went very, well, viral for those days. It went very famous in all the newspapers. This person took a photo while on holiday here and there was like a little, like a, what does it look like, the, the Nessie? It's like a sea snake. Sea snake underwater marine creature mythical and it's just been like the story ever since and I guess they just keep with it because so many people come here because they hear of the Loch Ness Monster. We're leaving Urquhart Castle now but on the way out there is one last thing to see it is a trebuchet 
um, what they would have used to smash castle walls and I think the English brought them up here and sieged a lot of castles in Scotland that way. We have come to a waterfall. This is the old bridge of Invermoriston, I think. Um, yeah, and it has, it's actually, from the road you can see this pretty bridge but you can't see the waterfalls. So it's actually a lot more ferocious than I thought. It's a lot of water there. So we are gifted here with two bridges to look at. We have one which is the road bridge, one which is the footbridge, and that overlooks the waterfall behind me. Um, the water actually looks a little bit brown right now. Maybe that's because all of the rain. Um, and it's a bit too turbulent to swim in, I think. Maybe good for whitewater rafting. Not sure if they do that here, but... Very pretty though. It is very pretty. Should we send the drone up? and Fort William actually runs alongside the lock so it's a very scenic drive we do have rain today but I can only imagine how beautiful this drive would be on a good day uh, this place it looks really stunning they've got these all these mountains around us and these high pine trees and it's very beautiful you're just expecting a deer to pop out and we really hope we see some fluffy cows Corey was just saying how mythical it all feels up here with all this forests and the locks, especially in the highlands. Oh, something's happening. What is it? Very exciting. We've just pulled over because we have spotted some highland cows. They're so cute. We really wanted to see some on the trip. They're just iconic when you're having a road trip through Scotland. Uh, they're just, I don't know, you want to go and just ruffle them. <laughs> they're so like hairy and they've got the big horns. They look like big friendly beasts. They look very friendly. Uh, they look like they're busy eating though, so they're not very close, so I couldn't get close to them. But I'm really happy we saw them, and I do hope that we see some more. Heading back from Loch Ness to Fort William, the main stop is Fort Augustus. It has this nice little water channel. This is where you can get your petrol, some food supplies, a few restaurants. I think a few people use this as a base to go hiking around the area too. Uh, we're going to get some fuel, because it's the cheapest we've seen in a while. It's so expensive here. And I'm going to head back to grab some food. the road. I hope they'd be safe. It looks like they're staying just with the grass. Mummy she taking her baby sheets out for an evening walk. Hello. And well, one here. That's not safe. You might have to go and shoot I know it's not funny, but what else can we do? Guys, so we've had a terrible accident. I was flying the drone, um, following the car, Charlotte was driving, and um, it just went sideways. It decided to follow the car, it should go hard right, and kind of just went into some trees. Um, and I went to go find it, it was on the forest floor. Um, and look at it, it's not good. God. It was, it was going to happen eventually, wasn't it? A month? <laughs> well, how did... <sighs> so we are continuing our mission up to the Glen Nevis Rope Bridge, uh, which is at the top of Nevis River, I think it is, uh, next to Glen Nevis, the mountain peak. Um, and it's such a nice drive here. We're just driving through next to these massive mountains and we've got waterfalls on both sides. Um, it's very magical looking once again. Scotland does this well. And we keep crossing these tiny little bridges too. Um, it's looking very epic. We would show you some drone shots <laughs> right about now, but we don't have a drone now. Nevis. So 
We, we're actually starting this walk quite late in the day. It's 8.30 p.m. but because we're going into summer, uh, it's going to be light until about 10 o'clock. So we have a fair amount of time. I don't know if you guys can hear that as well, but that is the sound of the water below. All of the creeks, tributaries are running down the slopes of the mountains, down into the valley below, and there is a lot of water down there. It is all white water. That's very noisy. <laughs> Midgey update, they are out <laughs> and they are attacking. We can't stay too long in any one place, otherwise they come and get us, but we found a rope bridge. So we are gonna go across the rope bridge now. Uh, that looks scary, I'm not sure about that now. <laughs> That's not so much a rope bridge as a metal, yeah, nah. <laughs> I'm gonna go on it. You're gonna go on it? Yeah. Okay, I'll film you. <laughs> Cool. But at some point in the middle, the ropes twist over and it sort of like jolts you down a bit. Oh my god. <laughs> it's way too wide. This is built for very tall men. Yeah, that was cool. It was pretty scary. You do feel quite secure, but it's just the arm nerve. If you're a bit shorter than me, there's no way you could reach across to hold those. I was really like stretched out. But uh, beautiful spot. It's so nice. Imagine being here on like a... Bring a picnic here in the daytime. If you were here on a warm, sunny summer's day, this would just be so idyllic. It's like massive waterfall over that side, massive waterfall over that side. And then up there, if it weren't cloudy, you'd probably see the UK's tallest mountain, Ben Nevis. Another day in Fort William and we are going to go into town and see if we can find a little cafe to upload our next YouTube video. <laughs> uh, there is a vegan one in town so we are going to go and check it out. It's called Wildcat. Okay, so there was a bit of a queue but we've got a table now and we're just looking at the menu. There's a lot of stuff to order. The coffee menu seems pretty expensive. Really hot. Is it? Mm -hmm. yeah. That is such a great little find here in Fort William. I didn't expect to find like a vegan, an all vegan, 100% vegan. They try and do fair trade, mostly organic, and a lot of it's just homemade right there. Super delicious. Um, very yeah. busy, wasn't it? it was very busy, like constant stream of people. We had to wait a few minutes for a table and a lot of other people to wait. But I guess that just goes to show what a good cafe it is and how popular it is within this small area of all these yeah. tourists and hikers. But definitely go there if you're in Fort William. It's probably like you know, the best cafe, some really good food. Yeah. Fort William is the end point for the West Highland Way, which is a hike up here. And um, I've seen some places saying, come get your certificate. So we did walk the Camino in Spain a few years back. So I guess it's something similar, like a old pilgrimage route that you can uh, tick off your like um, stops throughout and you get a certificate at the end so that's something actually I'd love to look into because we do love hiking we're pretty gutted that we had bad weather, bad weather here because we did want to do a lot of hikes today was actually supposed to be really bad but it's actually cleared up so it could have actually been a good hiking day but we didn't want to take that risk this morning because it was pretty terrible yesterday you can't hardly see the mountains and it's and not really what you, want. you slept until nine o'clock. <laughs> I'm pretty tired to be honest too. <laughs> yeah, West Highland Way is something we'll have to look into because this is just like a taster trip for us for Scotland. Yeah. We definitely want to come back. We've only been up here for six days. Of course, there's so much we want to see, but we need to get back down to Cornwall. But definitely we'd love to come back. Just outside of Fort William is Neptune Staircase. Uh, it's the longest staircase lock in Scotland. 
And if you're into those kind of things, this one's pretty cool to see. It actually has a beautiful view of the mountains down below. Uh, however, we just popped here because we are on the way to see the very special Harry Potter famous bridge. We are on our way to see the famous viaduct. It's very well known because it was used in the Harry Potter films. Three times. It is the Glenfinnan Viaduct. It's a beautiful curved uh, arched bridge with how many arches? Like th nine or 13 arches. Um, and the train is scheduled to come in the next half an hour. So there's a lot of tour buses here. Very popular little spot. Glenfinnan as a town, I think is very small. Um, so this is bringing in a lot of action. <laughs> this place you may have seen, obviously in Harry Potter, but it has absolutely blown up on social media, on Instagram particularly. There's a spot and it's up on the hill and it looks down, it does look gorgeous. But wow, it's a bit of an IG versus reality because it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. It kind of is, but there's so many people here. There's actually tour buses <laughs> like coming up buses. to the car park and there's everybody around here and both sides of the hill. You can just see all these people sat there waiting. I don't blame them because we're doing the same too, but <laughs> Instagram makes it look like, oh wow, it's just yeah. this random place. You go to it and you'll just get this view by yourself. <laughs> um, the weather's not great either though, so not too worried, but I would like to go a bit higher just so you can really see that steam train coming around on top of the viaduct. Are we going to be one of those people on the hill? Yes, <laughs> though isn't it going back to Fort Williams when we're going that way? It'll be going that way, yeah. So usually you get the shot and it's coming this way towards you. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's why that hill... Oh god, where are we going to go? <laughs> Underwhelming. I think that would have been 10 times better if you were sat in the first class train carriage of the Jacobite stream train. <laughs> and that is that. So, um, what would we recommend if people were to come here and see that for themselves? It's one of those places where you say to people, go early to beat the crowds, but you can't because the train only runs at certain times. And yeah. There's actually tour buses coming here for those certain times. And I don't blame it, like, it would be cool. I think if you want to see that, go on top of the hill. Like we were here a bit too late. I think we thought it was coming a bit late. Well, Corey thought it was coming a bit later. If you got the money, just book a first class carriage. I was actually going to. It cost around fifty pounds each. Was it? But it was fully booked. I was looking a few weeks ago, and like it sells like so fast. Okay. Um, maybe that was probably the better way to enjoy the steam train. Yeah. Don't get us wrong. This is a beautiful place to visit. It's just might not be what you expect from what you see online. <laughs> It's our last day here in Scotland and we're going to end it by visiting Glencoe. It's very famous in Scotland because it's one of the most beautiful locations. Harry Potter has been filmed there and James Bond. However, we have a very cloudy, rainy day. Um, but it kind of looks quite beautiful out there with all the mist and the water's really flat. But we're going to continue uh, another five minutes drive to Glencoe and hopefully we can see some of its beauty. Well, the weather is absolutely crap. <laughs> but you can see these massive hills around us, mountains maybe, um, and it looks like a pretty special place. It's a cute little village. Everything's sharp, it seems. Obviously, this is the UK summertime. You can tell that this place is really magical and beautiful. We just had a short drive through this forest and it looks amazing, but we really, we're just gonna have to come back. I think we're just gonna have to come back and do all of Scotland again. We only had six days here, but unfortunately we just didn't really have great weather. Um, but it was just a taste trip for us because we really wanted to just squeeze in a little trip to see what Scotland's like because it's been on our bucket list for so long and we have really enjoyed it, but there's just been so many things we weren't able to do. We wanted to hike Bent Nevis, but the weather was pretty bad. We wanted to explore Glencoe, but it's just raining, raining, raining and the clouds are so low that we can't really see the landscape. 
Yeah, Scotland, we're Wait, gonna have to come there. back. Yeah. Okay, well, we have just pulled over to this kind of viewing area on the side of the road and we have behind me one of the most beautiful views I've ever seen, like Glencoe. We're literally just driving through here and to, just to see what it's like for another future trip and it has just blown me away. I don't really want to leave but we have to. I can see people hiking down below on this trail. You have a waterfall in the distance, these towering mountains, some rain, <laughs> some clouds. It is absolutely stunning here. I don't want to leave. We are 100% wanting to come back here, especially to Glencoe. It's absolutely stunning seeing these high mountains next to the roadside. And today is awful weather-wise, but we can see how amazing this place is. So I can't wait to see this one day in good weather. With a drone. With a drone. I think that this is a place Fort William and here. I want to come back with good weather and just do a hiking holiday mm. because we had to cancel a lot of hikes because it was just yeah, the weather was terrible, we just especially with all our equipment, we couldn't really, you know, fog in such bad rain. But absolutely stunning. This place feels really special. And Glencoe, we're going to end it here, but we hope that we can start another vlog one day in Scotland back here.